All right, so if you recall when I mentioned about hosting, there is some issues currently with Firebase. Just to be aware, Firebase support for Next.js is work in progress, and so there are some issues that we're running into, more specifically for server actions. I am following that closely, and the link to that issue should be uh, in the description, so if you want to follow that, uh, so you're aware of what's going on with that. So what I want to do is I want to demo to you that the app is working if we do emulation uh, through Firebase tools, and then when we do send it for hosting in Firebase, it doesn't work. It doesn't uh, invoke the cloud fun uh, the function that's supposed to be created for the server actions, right? So let's go through that right now. All right, so in order for us to test our app via the emulator, all we have to do is fire up Firebase, emulators, start. Now, depending on the type of solutions you use or products that you selected when we did Firebase and Net, the emulator would start all of those items. If you remember, we did hosting, and I believe we did Firestore and Function. If we didn't do Function, the nice thing is Firebase recognizes server-side code, so it will create functions for us automatically if it does detect that, right? And I will show you that here in just a second. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say start. Okay, so now that it's actually loaded, the emulator is ready to go. This is how we see it right here. Emulator is ready, as you can see. But this is also how we know that a server-side function's also been created for us. If you see, if you take a look right here, you'll notice it says SSR to do fire. That's server-side rendering, server-side code for us. So it's got a function for us that's set up to run our app, and then certainly it's got hosting ready for us too, as you can see right over here. If we actually go to the hosting site right now for the emulator, all right, we can see that hosting is being fired up. And we can see that it's actually running. So if we get click on get started, it already recognized that I was logged in. And you can see that I have my to do's. If I wanted to add a to do, you can see that it's working. And that is working because it is using that server side function that was created through the emulator, as you can see right here, function initialize, right? And then if I want to delete, it's doing the same exact thing. It's all working as expected. If we look at Firebase, we can see that it's working because if we open this up, we're currently in this user, right? We only have one user that we're playing with right now. We're going through all of the to-dos. Right now there's only one to-do. If I click that to complete, you'll see that it's updating. If I add another to-do, you'll see that the other to-do has been added, right? Here's to-do two. And if I delete to-do one, you'll also see that that's gonna update our database and delete to-do one. So everything is working through the emulator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to then send this to Firebase hosting and see the kind of issue that we're seeing. Let's do that right now. All right, so in a perfect world, our app is running and it should be ready to deploy to Firebase. So why don't we walk through the steps and launch it. And to do that, all we have to do is Firebase deploy. And that is it. Now, typically in an app like this where it's only the functions and only the hosting is what you need, you would say something like Firebase deploy only hosting and functions. You can do that. Another thing also I want to point out, which I didn't earlier, is if we were to do emulator start, uh, typically this will run everything. It could be Firebase hosting, it could be Firebase functions, it could be Firestore, it could be all those. But if you only needed a couple of the items that, to run, you can say dash dash only hosting functions, which would also run it properly. So I just wanted to go over that with you. But for this, what we're going to do is we're just going to say Firebase deploy everything we got. And let's do it. While this thing is loading, I do want to point out, as you see here, uh, after initializing the deployment, it does say during the preview, because we are in preview mode right now with Firebase hosting for next Next.js, all right, uh, support is best effort and breaking changes can be expected, which was, again, I want to make sure that everyone is aware. All right, so our deployment is complete, as you can see over here. Everything should be good to go. We can check, it actually provides us the actual URL to the hosting site, right? and it tells us go to a console. So let's let's actually go through it through Firebase. Let's go here. This was the database that we were looking at, but what we want for this is we actually want 
hosting. We go to hosting. It's bigger so you can see. And then under hosting, you'll see right here, we now have a default web app uh, that's been deployed. Let's click on our app, go open it up to see if it's working. As you can see, it's been deployed, it's working. Let's get started. It looks like we can log in. Go ahead. As you can see, it is working as far as we're able to pull data from Firebase because this is the on snapshot, right? So that works perfectly fine. But the issue is when I add it to do here. If I click on that, nothing happens. If we look at our Firebase, we will also see that it's not being added. There's only one to do, which is the to do two. Again, if I do a to do one, nothing happens. Nothing is added. So something is not being called, right? Uh, there's an issue with whatever the server side functions that was supposed to be created. If I go to functions, you'll notice that there is a server side to do function that's dedicated to our app, but it's not being invoked. Request in the last 24 hours is zero. We've already requested it twice. All right, so while we can't use server actions that Next.js provides through Firebase hosting temporarily, I do see this as a great opportunity to find a solution for it. How can we make it work? And that is where serverless functions come into play. So our next video, we're going to go through steps in creating cloud functions to solve this problem.